order. Our Board of County Commissioners meeting on February 8th, 2022. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bernard? Here. Commissioner Kerner? Here. Commissioner Marino? Here. Commissioner McKinley? Commissioner Sachs? Mayor Weinrock? Vice Mayor Weiss? Here. Thank you. Great. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner Kerner if he would lead us in our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Thank you, Vice Mayor Weiss. We ask you, God, to bless this meeting of people who earnestly desire to do their work in the best possible way, to benefit those we serve, and to leave our children a better world. Please give us the wisdom and vision to plan adequately and act correctly to achieve these ends. Amen. Amen. Uh, Mayor Weinroth is running a little bit uh, late this morning, but we're going to go ahead and, and move forward until he arrives. Mr. Commissioner Weiss, this is Commissioner McKinley. The host had me muted. I am here. Very good. Please note it for the record. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Assistant County Administrator, are there any additions, deletions, or substitutions? Uh, Vice Mayor Commissioners, we have uh, some deleted items as well as additions. On page 8, item 3C1 under engineering is deleted for further staff review. On page 22, item 3H4, uh, an FDO item is deleted for further staff review. On page 45, we're adding item 6E1. I'm sorry, uh, that is a deleted item from the um, addition sheet. Uh, we'll be doing that item at a, at a subsequent meeting. Uh, we will be adding on page 45 and 46, 6F1. Uh, this is uh, an item related to a conceptual term sheet for with the University of Florida for conveyance of approximately five plus acres of county owned property in the city of West Palm Beach. And on item 6G1, an add-on, uh, this is a motion from the county attorney for a scheduled meeting for an attorney-client session between the Board of County Commissioners, the administrator, assistant attorney, and outside counsel uh, regarding a settlement negotiation of pending litigation. Uh, that is the add and deletes that we have for the February 8th meeting. Thank you. I'm going to uh, just uh, as keep things moving along. Um, Prior to adoption, uh, does anyone want to amend uh, the agenda? Oh, Mayor, uh, <laughs> Mayor Kerner, it's been, it's <laughs> Commissioner Kerner, thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Weiss. I, um, in addition, I have two, two um, motions. The first one will be to uh, adopt the agenda as amended uh, while also reordering 6F1 to be the first agenda item heard under the regular agenda. And that would be my motion, and I'll have a second one after that. So 6F1 will be before 6A1, is that correct? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and I'm going to take over as chair. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for uh, taking control. A uh, little bit of traffic this morning on I-95. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, reorder the agenda to put 6F1 in front of 6A1. Do I have a second? I have a second by the Vice Mayor. And uh, I am going to make a motion to remove from consent item 3CC2. Item 3CC2 will move. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if it's all right, I'd like to adopt the agenda as amended, and then we can bring up the consent agenda. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we'll have a, a motion and then second. All in favor? All opposed? I seem to have five votes. Before we go any further, Commissioner Kerner, I'd like to address the situation with two of our members who are unavoidably uh, not here today. They have uh, one of our members is uh, on the West Coast and one is at a, a meeting in Tallahassee. I'm going to seek a motion. Uh, I don't know if Commissioner McKinley has made it on yet, but to allow her when she does come on to uh, participate. Do I have a motion to I have a motion by Vice Mayor uh, Weiss. 
Seconded by Commissioner Bernard. All in favor, all opposed, show that is approved by five to zero. And so Commissioners uh, McKinley and Commissioner Sachs, you will be able to participate as long as we have a quorum here, which means four members of our body will have to be present for business to be continued at this uh, location. Okay, now having taken care of that, uh, we have reordered the agenda. I have another motion by Commissioner Bernard. No, no, Mr. I, Mayor, I would, I'd, I'd move your item 3CC2 if you want to do that right now. Thank you, Commissioner Bernard. I have a motion to remove from consent item 3CC2. Do I have a second? I have a second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor? All opposed? Okay. I'm. I'm going to show Commissioner Sachs having voted yes. Uh, Commissioner McKinley, are you on the line? All right, we'll show that as a six to zero. Yes, I'm on my hand. Okay, seven to zero. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner McKinley. All right, I think we are back in business here. It's time to. Um, no, we'll, uh, we'll do the consent agenda real quickly and then we'll go to special presentations. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to take now the consent agenda absent item 3CC2. Does anybody else have com comments? Commissioner Bernard, you're recognized. No. You, okay, Commissioner Kerner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't have any desire to pull any further items from consent, but I did want to alert you that we do have one yes, com comment card on item 3K2, which is on the consent agenda and has not been pulled, so we'll have to give an opportunity. All right, very good. Webb. Commissioner uh, Sachs, uh, did you have any comments or are you uh, uh, ready to address the consent agenda? All right, we don't have audio for the Commissioner Sachs. Can someone from technical figure out what's going on? All right, Commissioner Kerner, why don't we call the person forward who has a comment card on consent? Now we got you, Commissioner Sachs. Did you want to be uh, recognized? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, Everything very good. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The first and only speaker on the consent will be David Webb on 3K2. I figured out how to do it. Mr. Webb, you are recognized if you are in the, there you are. You have three minutes, sir. Once again, yes. Thank you. I was here a month and a half ago. I don't know if you remember on another bid to be awarded. Um, I sent an email to you all about this bid. I am a local small business contractor. That's less than nine million a year in revenues. Uh, hoping to transition to the next size business. Uh, this project that you're awarding, 3K2, is what we do. It's well drilling. Uh, it's a $16 million bid, and it would be growth for us. Um, we are a local business. Uh, two reasons we were not selected in this. One, um, qualifications were written so that only uh, basically only one contractor qualifies and that contractor is from Lee County and they basically have a monopolistic type ownership of the market so uh, for well drillers who d haven't done that well three times before uh, they don't qualify according to your specifications so it's kind of like a sole source bid but it's let in a way that is um, competitive but uh, if you can see, there was only two bids in this bid, one us and the others them. And uh, we have done two injection wells. Sarasota County heard me make a plea, changed their qualifications, and we did successfully complete one for about $3 million. When you're a monopoly or you act like one, you can set prices and, um, you know, being a local contractor in Palm Beach County, I'd like to grow into that and bring those revenues and people to our county, but 
In this case, they continue to support the Lee County operation. Uh, the other reason that I wasn't selected was, once again, I didn't know and I didn't fill out every single subcontractor on, on the forms. However, I did agree and submit proving that I met the API initiative, which is a local electrical contractor. But the rules are written that I am thrown out completely because I didn't fill out every single person working on my job. Again, I brought this to you on the last one. Maybe that process could be looked at. Um, I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just letting you know how you're running your operation. So, yeah, I know at the top it's, you know, you only get what you see in writing. So, uh, if there's ever any way I can help with that, be glad to do so. Um, thank you for helping me as a small business get to this point. Any questions for me? Govern well. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, I'm going now going to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, leaving off item 3CC2. I have a motion by Commissioner Kerner, second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, I'm going to show that as approved 7 to 0. All right, we're now going to go on to item 3CC2. Um, the reason why I've removed this item from the agenda is I'm going to recuse myself from the discussion or the vote on this item. Uh, I will be filling out the necessary paperwork on this, but the ra rationale for my recusal is the Boca West Community Charitable Foundation, Inc. is one of the uh, parties that the sheriff is looking to make a, uh, a donation to through his law enforcement trust fund, and my spouse is the executive director of that organization. So to, in an abundance of caution, I am going to recuse myself from the vote. Commissioner Kerner. Thank you, Mayor, for the disclosure. A motion to move uh, to, for passage of 3CC2. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Kerner, second by Vice Mayor Weiss to approve 3CC2. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, all opposed, show that is approved by six to zero with one recusal. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, now it's time for our star, Dr. Alina Alonzo, and I'm told she's bringing great news today. Thank you doc, for coming, Dr. Alonzo, and we are eager to hear what's going on in our community as far as COVID. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here again. Uh, good to see all your spaces and uh, <coughs> Commissioner McKinley and Commissioner Sachs on the video. Um, I have a very quick update so that we can go through this very quickly, but I did want to be able to share the sh some data so that you know things are still going on. And um, let me just get this up and running. And here we go. So um, to bring the, the data today, I went ahead and uh, I'm going to show my first slide is the um, our number of deaths so that we can see that these are now coming down a little bit. Um, hopefully in the information that you have in front of you, you can, whoops, you can see this little bit of a, um, a slight coming down now finally. You can see it a little bit better here on the death that shows this little graph that's kind of flattened out. So that's this flattening here at the end. Um, so the national deaths are going down. Of course, here in Palm Beach County, we have been uh, doing very well, um, and the hospitals are also doing very well. I'll start with that. There's uh, no, no, no problems in terms of capacity. Of course, uh, everybody's still short on, on staff. That's uh, nationally, um, and I think all the sectors are suffering from people being out sick. So that is still something that we have to be very careful with. Um, our next slide shows that the entire country is, uh, with the exception of some very small little uh, spots, 
are actually still under high transmission. I wanted to remind everybody again what high transmission means. Here's the chart of how it gets calculated. What is keeping us so high is the very, very high number of people. In other words, the number of cases, new cases per 100,000. And that has to be under 100 in order to go down to the next level, which is substantial, and then moderate under 50. And then finally, when we get to low, under 10 per 100,000. So we're nowhere near that yet. Um, hopefully, I believe that we may get to that substantial by the end of February to early March. We do have a little glitch with a little data dump. Remember what that data dumps are? When the labs have forgotten or been very busy and they haven't turned their labs in. So right now we got a big dump from a bunch of labs and we have to go through those and take out the duplicates and then count the new numbers. So we may see a little bump going up in the next few days as we get through those. But it should not um, be too difficult. By, by a couple of weeks, it'll go back down. Um, our next slide is uh, people are still talking a lot about the variants. Um, the Omicron obviously has taken over at 99.9%. All its babies, remember I called them A1, A2, and A3, all those sub-variants or lineage variants are all part of Omicron. And that is the variant that is causing all the problems with a lot of transmission, um, very contagious. And so that is what's causing so many people to get sick uh, even over and over again. Here is our data that comes uh, mostly. We always need to thank Ed Chase for putting this together for us. Um, I try to put everything on this one page. Uh, we can see that we had the lowest number of vaccinations in the week of January 28th through February 3rd. We only did 1,403. That's the lowest we've had in a long time. Um, out of that 1,403, our mobile van the site at Mid-County that's vaccinating, and FAU is doing about 25% um, of those vaccinations. So we have been not busy uh, the way we were before, but we have definitely continued to vaccinate. We're also working with community partners to be able to, before we go to a site, get those community, um, community workers to go out into the community and get people ready for us coming. That has helped us to have more people coming to a site and us being able to do more vaccines. So that's been very, very helpful. Um, we also see here that uh, at this point, we, the vaccinations with one dose is at 76% for five year old and older. Unfortunately, um, the number for complete vaccination is down in the 60%. So. We still have a long ways to go before we get um, a little bit more vaccination for a little more protection. Um, we also see that the numbers are going down a little bit slower than they were um, at the very beginning when it started. So now we're going, our number of 100,000 per population is going down by about 200. So in order to get this <coughs> below, below 100, it's probably going to take at least two or three weeks. So I'm hoping by the beginning of March, will be able to go down to substantial here to this color. Uh, before we were at moderate and we wanna get all the way down to low. Um, our positivity is at 15.1. Uh, that went down with almost five points. So that's going down slowly also. We wanna get below 10 to get here uh, to substantial. So again, if that continues to go down, I think we're gonna see a little bump. So another couple of weeks at least before we get to that 10. Um, and the rest uh, is just data that we continue to, to look at, uh, make sure how we're doing. This is just to remind you of where we were uh, back in November, that we were at 2.3% with 48 cases per 100,000. That's when we were at moderate. And we want to at least get to that point um, so that we can uh, be a little more free in the community. I also uh, created, uh, this is a chart that um, Ed gives to us weekly, 
And you can just see this is where we were. The yellow line is where we were at moderate back in November. Um, our numbers started going up a little bit, and then they really started doubling, right? And this is when you put the mass mandate on here um, around, I think it was around January 4th or so, um, because the numbers had really gone up very, very high. Um, that helped then to the numbers go down a little bit, and we're at that 300 mark right now. Uh, so still high transmission, people need to be careful. And like I said, if we continue going down the way it's going, you can see it's going down by about 200 or so, we should be there um, into March, at least to substantial, and then we'll drop to moderate. So um, that's what I have. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to ask them answer them, I mean. Oops. Thank you, Dr. Alonzo. And obviously, we're, we're hoping that next few weeks this will continue to trend down. Um, I don't see any lights. I think that everybody is pretty satisfied with that update. And I thank you so much Excellent. for that. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we're going to move now to our public hearings. This is item 5A1. We have before us a request by staff to adopt the necessary uh, authorizations for Palm Tran to submit an application for the acquisition of replacement paratransit vehicles at a cost of $1,089,000. If uh, uh, Commissioner Kerner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Motion to receive and file proof of publication. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kerner. Yes, and I have a second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, show that as being approved seven to zero. You're always there to help me out, Commissioner. Okay, um, we do have our executive director here, but if nobody needs a presentation, I certainly will accept a motion to approve 5A, 1A, B, C, and D. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Kerner, second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed. Clinton, you have your authorization to ask for money from someone else. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Okay, now we are going to, uh, before we get on to our regular agenda, uh, I want to remind anybody who would like to have an uh, opportunity to address the commission to please complete a card and hand it to our staff here. Um, we are in a moment going to introduce our good friend Dr. Fox from UF. And so let's start with this agenda item, which we've reordered, which is item number 6F1. Isame, you, you have the floor. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Isami Ajala, Director of Facilities Development and Operations. With me today is Perby Bogaida, Director of FDO's Property and Real Estate Management Division, and Chief Assistant County Attorney Howard Falcon. Through this item, staff will provide the board a status update on the conceptual agreements reached by the, with the University of Florida regarding the potential conveyance to the University of approximately five acres of county-owned property in the city of West Palm Beach. Staff and UF have developed a draft term sheet for the board's review and direction. If acceptable, staff is also seeking authorization to negotiate and conduct due diligence and master planning on the 45th Street property. On August 24, 2021, the mayors of the city of West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County held a joint press conference to announce a potential educational initiative for the region. The initiative provides for the conveyance of real estate owned by the city, county, and third parties within the area historically known as Government Hill in West Palm Beach to the University of Florida for the planning, design, and construction of an urban educational campus to offer graduate, professional, and executive programs. On August 31st, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners directed staff to initiate conversations with the University of Florida and the City of West Palm Beach towards the establishment of a urban campus and requested that staff consider four key elements, reversionary rights, use restrictions, closing costs, and development timeline. 
For purposes of location context only, allow us to share that the area commonly referred to as Government Hill consists of three blocks in West Palm Beach, east of Tamarind Avenue, from Clematis Street to the north to Fern Street to the south. Each block is currently owned in part um, by the state, <coughs> county, and city governments, respectively. The county's current holdings on Government Hill amount to approximately five acres, the city's holdings amount to approximately 2.2 acres, and the uh, private holdings to approximately 4.5 acres. The Urban Campus Initiative entails the conveyance of the county-owned property on Government Hill at no charge to the University of Florida. In preparation for said potential conveyance, staff <coughs> obtained two separate appraisals for the county real estate holdings, which averaged to a fee simple interest market value of $42,072,500. On December 7, 2021, star staff and representatives from the University of Florida provided the board a report on the status of the initiative. At that time, the board provided further direction as to its expectations for the terms required for a potential conveyance. Since it was last presented uh, to the board, staff and UF representative have remained engaged in conversations toward the development of a conceptual term sheet that could be presented to the board for approval. In mid-January 2022, UF representatives notified staff that in order for the budget appropriation process to progress at the state level, additional reassurances as to the county's commitments towards the development of the urban campus were required. As a result, staff and UF representatives increased efforts towards reaching a final agreement on the conceptual term sheet. And significant process was made reaching mutual agreements in multiple areas. Please allow us to provide you a brief overview of those terms that warrant highlighting. First, a declaration of development intent has been established for the urban campus, which summarizes the university's goal of having a campus embody a new approach to academic offerings and development. As envisioned by the UF, the urban campus will provide for close engagement with the private sector in collaboration with and in support of the public use. UF and staff have conceptually agreed that private presence on the urban campus shall not exceed 40% of the floor area of all buildings constructed on properties to be conveyed by the county, noting that those private uses will be subject to taxation as per current statutory requirements. UF will develop within 12 months following the execution of a conveyance agreement a master plan detailing at a minimum academic offerings, community engagement, capital development, funding sources, and overall project schedule for implementation. The county will be provided an opportunity to review the entirety of the master plan for consistency with the declaration of development intent and the opportunity to review and approve the portions of the master plan that relate to development on the properties conveyed by the county. In terms of the conveyance, there is, mute, uh, there is conceptual agreement as to the need to include reversionary rights and use restrictions, but as we will explain later during this presentation, the details regarding the same are yet to be defined. Post conveyance, relocation of the county's community services department will require close coordination between the county and UF. Therefore, conceptual agreements have been reached as to the necessary steps to ensure continuity of operations without delay in construction of the urban campus. Similarly, uh, coordination and integration with the city-owned properties and potential expansion of the resulting land established by incorporation of privately owned real estate holdings remains an essential component for the success of the urban campus initiative. The conceptual term sheet effectively captures said interactions. UF has conceptually agreed to provide uh, the county periodic reports on the development and operation of the urban campus and to incorporate in its design, cons in its design concepts that will allow for the most efficient use of the street network that services the Government Hill area, including potential benefits resulting from coordination with the county's intermodal transit center. Due diligence and funding for the urban campus will continue to be the university's responsibility. In light uh, of its potential contribution towards the development of the urban campus, the university will grant the county naming opportunities consistent with applicable university guidelines. 
UF has agreed to coordinate with the county's Office of Equal Business Opportunity to encourage small and minority businesses participation in the procurement opportunities associated with the development of the uh, urban campus. We hope that this brief overview suffices to show that significant progress has been made towards addressing all essential items as per the di direction provided by the board during the August uh, 31st and December 7 meetings. Furthermore, we hope it goes to show that UF and staff have effectively and closely coordinated on multiple issues. That said, as of today, two open uh, items remain, both of which are foundational in nature and critical to finalize in the term sheet. First, as previously stated, UF representatives and staff have uh, conceptually agreed to a conveyance of the county-owned parcels at no charge, subject to reversion rights. However, the extent and magnitude of said reversionary rights remain an open matter. Both parties are trying to secure a delicate balance that will provide the university the flexibility it will need to secure financing and public-private partnerships, while at the same time providing the county safeguards and assurances it requires when uh, conveying county property. Second, and uh, as uh, stated earlier during uh, today's uh, presentation, while reviewing the Declaration of Development Intent, we had mentioned that UF intends to create a campus that provides for close collaboration with the private sector <coughs> and that it was conceptually agreed that private presence on the campus, as it relates to county properties, will not exceed 40% of the total built area. In qualifying state uh, private presence, the university has asserted that the same will be in collaboration with and in support of uh, the public use. Staff and UF representatives still have to define what it means to be in collaboration with and in support uh, of the public use. Against this backdrop, drop staff is recommending to the board that it take several actions related to the Urban Campus Initiative. First, staff is recommended that the board approve uh, the conceptual term sheet as presented. Approval of the term sheet will provide the university the additional confirmation required for the continued engagement. Please note um, that the approval uh, is not authorizing conveyance at this time, nor is um, binding to the board or to UF. Uh, to the same. Second, uh, if the conceptual term sheet is approved, staff is requesting to be authorized to finalize the same and then proceed to drafting a conveyance agreement. The conveyance agreement will be brought to the board uh, for approval at a later time. If staff and UF um, fail to reach an agreement on those material terms, staff will then return to the board seeking further direction. Lastly, staff is requesting it be authorized to commend the due diligence and master planning process for the county on 45th Street property required in preparation for the potential relocation of the community services department. The net result of authorizing staff to proceed with site planning of the 45th Street at this time will be the acceleration of an already approved project. The staff will need to procure uh, the same ser services required for the due diligence and site planning effort, which will take approximately four months. Upon selection of a design firm, staff will return to the board for approval of the resulting contract and request uh, and a request to authorize advanced funding. Uh, we would like to inform the board that uh, the University of Florida president, president Dr. Fox and Tom Mitchell, by pre Vice President of Advancement, are present in the audience and have come prepared to address the board, if so the board wishes. Um, this concludes staff uh, presentation, and as usual, we will address any questions as you deem appropriate. Thank you, SMA. We appreciate that. Um, just one question before we get on to uh, public comment. We had received a letter, uh, all of us, from Dr. Schwinn, president at uh, Palm Beach Atlantic. And in her letter, she's suggesting that there might be an opportunity for workforce housing on this parcel for not only uh, people who are employed or going to school at UF, but people who would be students or faculty from Palm Beach Atlantic University. Have you done any research into if that kind of a restriction is something that could be done, or is, does this something that we need to continue our research on? 
So we have, uh, through our conversations with UF, uh, touched on the subject of housing, and they have consistently stated that housing obviously will be needed. We have a conceptual term included in the term sheet that states that <clears throat> excuse me, housing will be for students, faculty, and related academic uses, so to speak, and that if they were to pursue any housing outside those constraints, they will require authorization from the county, and that goes to open market type of uh, housing, stepping aside from uh, student, faculty related housing. Very good, thank you for that clarification. Okay, I don't see any lights on yet. Um, I'm going to ask my friends who are online, uh, Commissioner Sachs and Commissioner McKinley, uh, just if you if you do have a comment, just you know let me know either by text or by waving or somehow get our attention. Um, all right, uh, and Commissioner Kerner, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize you for having brought this forward uh, with uh, Mayor James from West Palm Beach, and I certainly am uh, in very, you know, very supportive of this uh, of this uh, of this p proposal, and I thank you very much for taking the time to visit with uh, President Fox up in Tallahassee to start the uh, the, the ball rolling on this. Thank you, Mayor, for those kind words and comments, and uh, I very much look forward to you carrying the ball from uh, this point farther. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, uh, let's go to, uh, do we want to have uh, UF, uh, Dr. Fox, did you want to make any comments before we take a public comment? Why don't you come on up? And again, we are very happy to have you here in our city, and we thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Uh, indeed, thank you, Mayor Weinroth, uh, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Uh, I'll start with, uh, I'll share two things. First off, I'll start with uh, just a note of gratitude um, for the uh, county administrator and uh, your staff. Uh, they've just been phenomenal. We appreciate all their hard work and, and discussions. And uh, as we all have the same goal, and that is to make this the most phenomenal campus, the most successful campus in the nation. Uh, we have high aspirations, and, and we appreciate that you all share that these aspirations are about the success of, of this campus. Um, secondly, I'll just uh, give a, a very brief update on uh, other uh, engagements that we've been working on that are relevant to, to the campus. Uh, I'll start with uh, the largest investor in this campus, and that will be the state of Florida. Uh, both, we believe, this year in 2022, and also on an ongoing basis, uh, uh, in operating budget and also ongoing in terms of uh, investments in, in uh, facilities. Um, we have asked the, the state of Florida for $100 million um, this year um, in 2022. Uh, I'm pleased to report that it is uh, it currently in the Senate budget and that amount, um, and uh, even though they're very much in the, in, in the budget process, the legislative process, and a lot has to yet to take place, we're very optimistic. We've committed to the state in return that we would match that with $100 million in philanthropy uh, that would be committed now, not long term, but uh, with commitments now. Uh, and we're very close to reaching that goal. Uh, that is quite different from when I, I met with you before, that we were aspirational. Now we are very close to being able to report back uh, to, to, to the state. Uh, the state has asked us, the leadership of the House and Senate, uh, to meet with them on Gator Day, uh, which is uh, two weeks from today, uh, no, excuse me, one week from today in Tallahassee, so we'll be giving them, giving them an update. Um, and then the, the second piece is the, uh, is the land. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to report that the city voted, West Palm Beach City voted uh, late yesterday uh, unanimously for conveyance of the land. Uh, the private landowner uh, is incredibly enthusiastic and supportive and intends to donate his land. So uh, we've made a lot of progress since I was last back here and I'm very grateful for your uh, consistent support. Thank you. Thank you, President Fox. We appreciate your comments. Um, just a couple of comments for the record, and we've had this comment, uh, or we've had this discussion before, but just to discuss a little bit of <clears throat> our feelings. Um, after Scripps, obviously, this county is wary of relationships that 
are long-term and things can change. And first of all, we understand that you, there will be a change in presidency at UF in the coming near term. And we certainly as a body would love to hear the commitment of the university when your successor is appointed and making sure that there's not going to be a change in direction once you've left your post. That I am 100% uh, uh, willing to guarantee personally and on behalf of the institution. Uh, this is not a President Fox initiative. This is a University of Florida uh, uh, state county city uh, initiative and it will endure beyond any of our uh, times in, in our offices. Um, I, I believe I'll, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be in position until the next president is in place, which likely will be about a year. That gives me a, a sense of urgency uh, to to have this campus be launched and and uh, the beginnings of of the initial leadership hired uh, and and work uh, going. I want to I want to be there uh, in 12 months uh, when when we can celebrate that that beginning. Um, so uh, that is, I, I think that's about as strong a commitment I, as I can make. And I, I, I'll say on behalf of our trustees, our board of trustees, the board of governors as well, they are all uh, supportive. They will not hire a president that is not even more supportive and enthusiastic than I am, which, and I don't see how they could do that, but, but uh, that's their goal. We appreciate your assurance with yeah. respect to that. And as you know that while this is a conceptual term sheet, that we may or may not approve today, and I'm, I'm assuming we'll approve. Um, there are two material terms that are still open, I think uh, have been alluded to, once, one being the reversionary rights, and second being the actual uses that will be uh, used by UF. And uh, I'm encouraged by the uh, conversations between the county and UF because there was a longer list of terms that had to be uh, worked through and we're down to the last two. So I'm very confident that those last two will be, uh, rec will come to terms between now and when a, a final term sheet is, is signed. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Dr. Thank Fox. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kerner, do you have some cards? I do, Mayor. Thank you. We will start uh, public comment off with Mr. Mike Burke from Superintendent of the Palm Beach County School District. Very good. And then uh, Brian. Superintendent uh, Burke, it's always great to see you. And I think this might be your first time in front of us as the uh, school superintendent. So I think you're right. Welcome. Good morning, all. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I must say, uh, a little background on me. I graduated from Florida State, my undergrad, and then got my master's degree from FAU. So a little bit of a challenge to put this orange tie on today, but that just uh, shows you how excited I am, I am about this potential partnership. I'm joined today by Miss Erica Whitfield. She's one of our board members. She's also a proud UF alumna, alum. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> but um, I had the, the pleasure of meeting with President Fox last week to talk a little bit about what this partnership could mean for our school district. And there's a wealth of opportunities for both our students and teachers. Uh, some of the programs they're bringing are very exciting to us, you know, the AI, uh, the financial, really everything they're, they're talking about. And as a learning institution, I feel like it can only help elevate our level of thinking here in Palm Beach County, our opportunities for our kids. You know, as we work to build a world-class education pipeline from, from pre-K all the way through, through grad school, this could be a nice addition and a, an important component. So I'll, I'll be brief today, just here obviously in support for this potential partnership. And uh, I'm not gonna tell anybody how to vote, but just know that the school system is excited about this. And uh, you know, we hope it uh, comes to fruition because we really see some benefit long-term for our community. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your comments and they are well taken. All right, our next speaker will be Brian Lamott, followed by Carrie O'Donnell. Ms. O'Donnell, you can take the other podium and so we can just go back and forth. Thank you. Good morning, um, um, Mayor Wayne Roth and uh, Vice Mayor Weiss, members of the County Commission. My name is Brian Lamont. I'm a senior vice president of WGI, a uh, engineering and technology firm here in West Palm Beach. Um, we have about 230 employees here in the um, city of West Palm Beach and probably about 400 employees throughout the state of Florida. I'm here this morning to support this project. 
There's many reasons we want to support this project, um, not only because it's a great uh, um, business driver down here, it's going to bring a, a lot of economic uh, viability to the downtown, et cetera, but again, one of the challenges that we have in our firm, and again, many other firms <clears throat> in our realm here in the technology firm and te technology type firms is hiring people. I just checked our HR um, department this morning, and we have over 68 openings that require higher education technical degrees that we can't fill. So with this, uh, with the UF coming here in West Palm Beach, it's going to make it a little easier for us to bring that talent in. And not only bring the talent in, but also bring local talent in. So kids that um, couldn't go up to UF or FSU or down to other, other um, colleges can come here to UF or this campus here to study. And again, keep that technology here because again, you know, because of the shortage of staff, we have, are pushing technology, we're pushing innovation. We have to, because we have to do more with less. So we're out there collecting data with LIDAR, um, drones, we're using BIM modeling, et cetera, et cetera, stuff that we didn't do before. But we need a highly educated workforce here to, to manage those programs. Data collection is another one, GAIS programming. These are all types of technology that require higher education and we're in desperate need of it. So um, I just want to say I support it, our firm supports it, and uh, looking forward to uh, moving this agenda forward and getting a positive vote. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your comments. Ms. O'Donnell, you're up. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you. Just some brief remarks. Over the past 30 years, I've been a very active, engaged member of our business community throughout the county as owner of one of Florida's largest public relations firms that gave me the platform to interact with companies that were both here and trying to grow and companies moving in from other states into, into our community. I have also been chair of the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches, and for the past two years, Chair of the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County. So I talk to the CEOs and their senior management about what they need. And at the epicenter of our quality growth for decades and decades, it's always been the lack of the this caliber of educational offerings. So we, we have wonderful schools here. I've represented 12 schools throughout our county, uh, both universities universities and, um, and uh, uh, high schools. And it is, while, while we, we truly excel um, both in our, our county public schools and in our private schools, this level of what UF plans to bring with these graduate programs and also executive education to our county is going to enrich us beyond our dreams. And I think that the alignment of the stars of the city of West Palm Beach, the county, these generous landowners that are part of this parcel and donors to UF coming together in a very difficult collaboration to get something like this done is literally a miracle. This is like manna from heaven that will feed every resident in our county in one way or another for decades and decades to come. So I urge you please to support this, thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. We appreciate them. Thank you, Mayor. The next two speakers will be Chuck Brunellos and Dale Hendrick. Hedrick. And again, you can take opposite sides of the room. Mr. Brunella, you're up first. You can begin. I can be, okay. Good morning, Mayor Weinroth, Vice Mayor Weiss, and members of the commission. My name is Chuck Brunellis. I'm the Director of Operations at SV Microwave Incorporated, a $100 million per year in sales uh, business located less than a mile from where we're sitting right now. Um, as a world leader in the radio frequency design and manufacture of connectors and cables for our military, aerospace, 5G, satellite and commercial telecommunications, um, our, biggest, our biggest challenge, like Brian's, is the hiring of top talent. Um, the, the, we have openings, as, as Brian said, 
for greater than, greater than eight months to a year and so forth because the right people just aren't in the area or, 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 or we haven't been able to find COVID has added to that and so forth. Um, the plan to bring the University of Florida graduate program to downtown here right in our backyard I think will set the, the county ahead for generations in solving some of our workforce needs, our talent recruitment and job opportunities and so forth. Um, they are, their offerings of financial technology, artificial intelligence, data analytic, analytics and cybersecurity fits well with many of the things we do, many of our departments that we seek talent for. I think, I believe that the, the, the cities and counties in, in, in the state and, and in the country would, would love this opportunity to have a, a, a university such as UF be here right, right, again, right in our backyard. So I urge you, the, the commission also, vote yes, not only for our company, but for many of the companies uh, in, our, in our area. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I would suggest to Commissioner McKinley and Commissioner Sachs, you mute yourselves unless you want to be identified or recognized. Mr. Hedrick, you are up. Uh, it's Dale Hedrick, uh, CEO of Hedrick Brothers Construction Company. Uh, right across the street. Yeah, we built uh, SV Microwave, just a little uh, <laughs> point of record. <laughs> and uh, a number of other things around here. We, uh, our company, Hedrick Brothers Construction, has over 150 employees, been here all my life, uh, born and raised here, obviously. And I am, uh, it's no secret that I'm a highly supportive uh, a member of the University of Florida alumni and uh, currently supporting them in a number of fields. My wife and I support them in a number of other things. But um, my, uh, I, this is, everybody understands the ramification the, uh, the ability to help uh, Kelly and her team recruit um, uh, fat, uh, uh, businesses in this area and really do what we've all talked about, making West Palm Beach a world-class uh, city. Um, what I would encourage the commission is to remove all the restrictions that you can. Um, you know, this is a gift for a top five university in the nation um, says a lot that they, we came to them, we are asking them to help us, and uh, you know I know that you're down to two points, but uh, please be, uh, pl please one number one approve it, number two, remove any there's um, unintended consequence that can come or possible unintended consequence that can come from whatever restriction you do put on there there is a potential unintended consequence that you have to be very, very careful of. So I hope that you'll be very thoughtful um, if you, one, approve it, and two, uh, are, are very careful on not uh, doing something that, that really would uh, restrict um, the, their ability to um, do what they plan to do. Uh, I, I will also tell you that I've been in talks with a lot of local educational leaders and. It's, it's amazing, the University of Florida wants to collaborate with everybody in this region from FAU to Palm Beach Atlantic and, and other universities around. So it's, it's not um, us versus them, it's, it's all the above. And they are extremely cooperative. Everything that I've seen is that they will cooperate and really build a world-class university right here in downtown West Palm Beach. So thank you. And I, I ask you to approve it and remove any restrictions that would hinder this deal from being done. Let's make a deal here. Well, thank, thank you, Dale. We appreciate your comments. Thank you, Mayor. Our next speaker will be Rachel Bonlaren. Any relation to uh, uh, our assistant county administrator? <laughs> Good morning, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and uh, Commissioners, Acting Administrator Bon Laren. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Rachel Bon Laren. Uh, speaking on behalf of Palm Beach State College, um, I too, as uh, Superintendent Burke, uh, graduated from FSU and got my master's at FAU. However, I am standing here today with my UF mask um, in support of uh, this wonderful uh, collaboration between the university and uh, the county. I know that President Parker has had numerous conversations um, with administration with the, with the university and committed to partnering 
with the university. And uh, I know, I, well, I expect that uh, our two little ones will probably end up going to, U to UF if Todd has anything to say about it. But um, <laughs> we truly look forward to con continued conversations and discussions with the university, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you, Rachel. We always appreciate your comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That concludes comments by members of the public. I did want to enter into the record, and if you'll allow me to just read uh, one paragraph from the letter that was referenced earlier by Palm Beach Atlantic University, if that's okay. Please go ahead. Dear Mayor Weinroth and Palm Beach County Commissioners, in my role as president of Palm Beach Atlantic University, I recently had the opportunity to meet with the University of Florida President Kent Fox, and we discussed how the University of Florida and Palm Beach Atlantic may work together in the future as UF proceeds to establish its graduate student campus in downtown Palm Beach County. I'll skip the rest of the content, um, but it closes by saying, on behalf of Palm Beach Atlantic University, as its president, I encourage the Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioners to approve UF's request to support its efforts in constructing a downtown graduate school campus, including workforce housing for both universities. I'm supportive of UF goals in Palm Beach County and urge your strong support of UF's request. Thank you, Commissioner. Can I have a motion to receive and file? So moved. Okay, so uh, by, uh, seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss, and that's been made part of the record. All right, time for us to dig into this. Is anybody up here or anybody online? Um, I see Commissioner McKinley, you are up first. Yes, good morning, Tony. Um, President Fox, I want to thank you for your service to the University of Florida. We're going to miss you in that role, but happy that you'll be going back to your first love of teaching uh, future, future uh, college graduates. But I, I look forward to supporting this item. I'm not going to step on the toes of my fellow Gators, up there, commissioners up there who are Gators, and let them make the motion. I think this is a wonderful asset for Palm Beach County and for South Florida. And I look forward to supporting it when my colleagues make the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McKinley. Commissioner Kerner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll make my comments very brief, but I wanted to uh, just thank all my colleagues for their time and effort in uh, helping create this vision. I know that it's taken a lot of back and forth between our unit of government and uh, the University of Florida and our representatives of our government through Ms. Virginia Baker and our director of uh, facilities, SMA. Uh, I just wanted to close by saying beyond how excited I am of, of the concept uh, of a graduate program here in our county and in our city, um, that it's important to note that at the initial outset of this, we're already having conversations about, um, at, at a minimum, $200 million of uh, outside funds and support, both from the legislature, through the legislative uh, budget request, and through private donors. And this is $200 million uh, when that process is complete that's going to be injected directly right into our community in a very important way. Uh, I know that there's a little bit of work left to do on this, and I know that we will remain engaged and give our input and guidance and direction through that process. But two quick, uh, two quick thank yous that are very important to me. Uh, initially, to President Fox and his uh, top staff and deans that have been involved, uh, Vice President Mitchell, Vice President Kaplan, the two deans, uh, had an opportunity to be with uh, Dean Savvy Mitra last night, who's the dean of the College of Business. And um, I want to thank you specifically for your engagement of the community, the engagement of other institutions of higher education, our school district, Palm Beach State College, FAU, uh, and Palm Beach Atlantic University. I think uh, one of our initial concerns, or the community's initial concerns at the outset was, uh, how is University of Florida going to respond in interacting and helping uplift uh, all the other stakeholders in education? Obviously, you've been very much committed to that, and that shows by the positive comments um, almost uh, unanimously throughout the county uh, with regards to higher education. And then the second thank you is to both our county administrator uh, and to our director of facilities. I know, I, I actually don't know, I know how much I've bothered you and how often you've kept me in the loop, and it's been on numerous occasions since the last vote um, 
but I can imagine how many more meetings and Zoom calls and in-person meetings that both of you have had with the University of Florida. And the one thing that I've heard consistently throughout that process as we've gotten closer and closer to a vision and an agreement is that both sides have been working um, in good faith and with excitement, uh, but with a proper due diligence. And I know that this board and this government throws a lot at you, SMA. Uh, every time I hear a comment about you, it's positive. Uh, I can attest to that personally because I've worked directly with you. So to you and your staff, thank you so much um, for all the diligence, all the hard work, and all the good faith you've put in to this effort. And with that, I will move 6F1, A, B, C, and D for uh, approval. Um, I think A has been dropped, so I think it's just B, C, and D. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay, right. so would you... Uh, Yes, uh, 6, F, 1, B, C, and D. Uh, Commissioner Sachs, one moment, please. Do I have a second? I have a second by Commissioner Bernard. Um, Commissioner Sachs, I'll recognize you. I don't want to interrupt the vote, but I just wanted to thank you, first of all, Mayor, for allowing me to be here virtually and participate in this very, very important discussion. And secondly, I wanted to thank uh, Commissioner Kerner for his vision of making this a possibility. Uh, this vision of his, of this uh, wonderful collaboration between one of the finest universities in the country uh, to collaborate with our school board, uh, with uh, President uh, President Kelly at FAU, uh, President Ava Parker at uh, Palm Beach State, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Schwinn at uh, at Palm Beach Atlantic. This is a this is a vision that will become uh, a wonderful. Uh, addition to Palm Beach County and I want to thank those of course in the Senate the state Senate setting aside a hundred million dollars for this it shows that there are people around the state that have uh, great faith in the ability of Palm Beach County to make this happen it's to me you have put so many uh, hours into this and I know we're almost in the finish line but it will come soon so thank you very much uh, everybody for making this vision almost a reality. We will get it over the finish line. And uh, Mayor, thank you for allowing me to be here virtually. Thank you. thank you, Commissioner Sachs. Commissioner Bernard, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, wow, it's no secret that I did go to Florida State for undergrad and, um, and I went to University of Florida for law school. And so I've been an attorney for 20 years and so I had the pleasure and the opportunity and the privilege to uh, go to UF and to get a JD and an LLM in tax law. So uh, it's a privilege. But today we get the opportunity to, uh, for UF to expand into Palm Beach County and to, uh, to be transformative. Um, I'm not a big fan of giving county properties. This is 5.3 acres and so in order for me to vote to give county property it must be something that is special that is important to the residents of palm beach county and today i'm supporting this item uh, because this is really important for the future of our residents in in palm beach county the state of florida and the united states i uh, want to thank ismi uh, for your hard work and your dedication uh, I'm sure we typically have a lot of conversations about this item. I uh, want to thank Pervy also and Howard for your leadership as, as counsel. Uh, Kelly Smallridge with the BDB, uh, thank you for leading this charge. And also the city of West Palm Beach, Mayor Keith James and the entire commission for voting unanimously to support uh, giving city land uh, to, uh, to, to, to do this project. Uh, and then also, uh, Mr. Jeff Green, I had the chance to see him last night for also being a visionary also in contributing his land to make this uh, possible. I want to thank President Fox, the Board of Trustees, the Board of Governors, and also the Florida Senate for um, putting $100 million in the budget. But you can have the money in the budget, but the governor's got to approve it. So we need to thank the governor in advance uh, for supporting it. So we want to thank Governor Ron DeSantis uh, for also supporting this important initiative for the residents of, of Palm Beach County in the state of Florida. 
Thank you to um, Superintendent Mike Burke for being here, uh, and also uh, Erica Whitfield, our school board member. Uh, when this item was uh, being discussed, this was we talked about how important it is to have a collaboration with uh, the school district because this is truly important for our kids in Palm Beach County. So I support this item and I look forward to voting on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Bernard. Vice Mayor Weiss. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo the sentiments of, of my fellow board members uh, this morning. I also uh, want to thank um, Commissioner Kerner for your vision and seeing the opportunity to transform this community. And uh, we wouldn't be here today without that. I want to thank our staff. I know you've, you've done a lot of hard work. There's still more to be done, but you all, uh, the comments that I received back from uh, Dr. Fox is nothing but accolades for, for you all. So thank you very much. And, and Dr. Fox, thank you and your staff. Um, I, I heard the same thing from, our, from ISME on you know, working together and collaborating with your staff um, to bring this forward. I think the opportunity to create a new educational higher ed uh, facility here in Palm Beach County is going to be transformative. I mean, I believe education is a great equalizer and provides the opportunity for everybody to have the best possible life that they desire. And this is going to create that platform right here in our community so that leading forward, and I have to say, Seeing the programs that you all at least have identified initially, they're so forward thinking, and that's the future, is to how we move forward together. And uh, I will be supporting this uh, initiative. I look forward, I know we have a little more work ahead of us, but I look forward in our collaborations and bringing this to fruition for the residents of West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County, and the state of Florida. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Marino. Thank you and good morning, all. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you, which doesn't happen very much from this dais, to the governor and the state elected officials for including this on their budget and showing that there is, it is important to make an investment in Palm Beach County. Um, secondly, Dr. Fox and uh, Mr. Mitchell, thank you for meeting with me yesterday uh, along with our staff to uh, basically put assurances in place that make this the highest and best use of public dollars in our county. I know that I said months ago that this is a no-brainer and I just continue to uh, hope that we make this happen and that the University of Florida and our staff put together a final draft, final term sheet that will be acceptable to all of us. Thank you very much and I look forward to supporting this. Thank you, Commissioner Marino. And before I recognize Commissioner Bernard again, I just wanted to make of my own comments. Um, I'm actually surprised we don't have the press here today because, you know, I, I don't have to see any cameras, so they may lift off the, uh, the broadcast that we're doing. But this is, like uh, Vice Mayor Weiss said, transformative. And we, I don't use that term loosely because this is going to change the way people view West Palm Beach and South County. Superintendent Burke, I am very excited about the opportunity. This is going to be for our grade schools, for our high schools, and that collaboration is another exciting element of this. I've always thought that for our county, it's a three-legged stool to be successful. We need to have a good, vibrant transportation system. We need to have affordable housing and we need to have an educated workforce. And we know from post-pandemic, having enough people to fill the jobs that are available has become a challenge. And I'm not saying this is gonna cure the problem, but this is certainly a step in the right direction. We're doing this. 
notwithstanding the fact that this is $42 million of our, our residents' property, so we don't do this, take this uh, step lightly, but I think that this is going to really benefit our children and our grandchildren, and this is gonna be something as a legacy to this body, to Dr. Fox, and to everybody that's been involved in this process. I think it's tremendous what is going on here today, and I will certainly be a very, very willing uh, supporter when we get to the vote. Commissioner Bernard, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our county administrator is not here. She had an emergency, and I didn't get a chance to thank her, so I want to add that. So thank you, our administrator, Virginia Baker. Very good. All right, I don't see any more uh, lights. I'm just going to make one last comment, just for the record, that approval of the conceptual term sheet does not authorize conveyance of the properties nor bind the board to convey or UF to accept the same. Uh, when we get to that step, that's going to take five of us to make that vote, and but that's in the future. This hopefully will give uh, enough of an indication of our our uh, support for this that you're going to be able to continue forward with this and the negotiations with our staff. That being said, all in favor of the motion that has been made by uh, Commissioner Kerner, all opposed. I see that as a unanimous vote of confidence and support. Thank you, everybody. All right, we're going to move on from item 6F1, unless anybody wants to take a moment off just to uh, go out and pop some champagne. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to 6G. No, no, let's, let's go back. 6A1, okay. I lost my 6A1. There it is over there. I got it. Okay, we're back to the regular agenda. This is housing and economic development. And this is going to be a third amendment of the Palm Beach County Housing Initiatives SHIP Program Local Housing Assistance Plan for fiscal year 2019, 20, and 21. Do I have a motion to, uh, one, two, three, four. We're yeah. still here, yeah. okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve? I have a motion by, commission, uh, by Vice Mayor uh, Weiss, seconded by Commissioner Kerner. All in favor? I'm sorry. There's yeah. a comment card. Yeah, okay. We have a comment card. Let's go forward with the comments. My apologies, Mayor. On 6A1, we have uh, one comment card. He does not wish to speak, but it's uh, as Ezra Krieg, as we all know him very well. As a member of the Affordable Housing Commission, I am in support of the amendment to uh, CHAP to uh, generally very positive comments. I'll leave it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show that as a no, pro. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? I'm going to show that as approved by 7 to 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let me move on here. 6B1. And this is my famous and infamous, and poor Ms. Beebe has to come all the way over here, has to schlep over from the airport just to hear us say that we're doing this because our legislature doesn't trust her to make this decision on her own. Do I have a motion to approve 6B1? So moved. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Weiss, seconded it by Commissioner Kerner. All in favor, all opposed, 7-0. Go back to your airport. <laughs> I've got one more item. Okay. <laughs> okay, 6B2. I'm, I'll move approval of item 6B2, Mayor. Okay, that's an amendment to the construction manager risk contract. Do I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Bernard. All in favor? All opposed? 7 to 0. Now you can go back to your airport. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, let's see where we are now. I have papers everywhere here. 6C1. Engineering, it's the... Okay. 6C1. I will accept the motion. Do you feel that you need to make a presentation on this, Mr. Ricks? It's up to your desire, sir. I'm seeing no one clamor for... Motion to approve 6C1. 
Commissioner Kerner has made the motion to approve. Vice Mayor Weiss has made a motion to uh, made a motion to second. All in favor? All opposed? Mr. Ricks, you're excused. Seven to zero. All right. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Mr. Bunlaren, I thought you were up here with us. I like the view down here much better. Beautiful. Thank you, uh, Mayor Weinroth, um, Vice Mayor Weiss, Commissioners. Um, before you is agenda item, which is our mid-session legislative update for the 2022 state legislative session. Um, all right, Ed Chase we, has been. All right, uh, we have to stop. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've lost my quorum. Okay. We'll take a five minute break. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so first, I just wanted to say um, thank you to um, Ed Chase, who's day to day on the ground for us on behalf of the county and our entire lobby team um, in Tallahassee. Uh, Ryan Marr from the county attorney's office is our, our new counsel uh, working with us on legislative affairs. Ryan, thank you for being here. And I also wanted to say thank you to um, Deborah Posey Blocker, who is uh, new also to the team and working with Palm Tran and has been spending some time in Tallahassee and will continue to do so throughout the session. She is with us today. Thank you, Deborah, for being here. Um, so 
we've got a lengthy presentation, so we'll try to go through it fairly quickly just to chat with you a little We're bit. We're not about going anywhere. We're very happy to listen. to slow this down to a nice, easy pace. <laughs> um, but we wanted to kind of talk a little bit about just up to the date where we are on the midway point through this legislative session. And before you have two items, one, you have a PowerPoint that we're going to use to guide us through the conversation today. You also have uh, Mr. Chase's um, legislative update, the weekly update through uh, last Friday that he's been um, sending out every week to all of you. So we're going to go through that PowerPoint. And, and, uh, and then obviously, if you have any questions, please interject any time or you can save them to the end. So the budget that we're looking at in Tallahassee this year so far, we have $108.6 billion budget in the Senate, $105.3 billion. Um, in the House of Representatives. About $3 billion apart, so still a good amount of work that needs to be done to reconcile those. But in there, uh, library grants and aid at $17.3 million, $2 million lining up for library uh, cooperative grants. Uh, we have a little bit more on the Senate side in historic grants, a little bit more on the House side in terms of our uh, cultural museum grants. Hopefully they can buy the, each other's positions on those. Um, Visit Florida, again, at $50 million. Uh, FERDAP funding, Senate fully funds our lists right now, and then our SCOP transportation projects for our small municipalities in the Glades at $9 million. A very hefty environmental budget. You'll see on the PowerPoint a number of uh, items that I'll just point out. Some of the Everglades restoration, $706 million in the Senate, $520 million in the House. Some of our LACO watershed restoration at $50 million lining up. Uh, some of the Forever Florida dollars, 90 million and 100 million, respectively, in the Senate and the House, and then some derelict vessel at 2 million and 8.2 million, respectively, in the Senate um, in the House. Focusing a little bit more locally on some of the projects that we have been working on your behalf and on many of our uh, partners throughout uh, the community, um, wanted to share with you that, uh, again, uh, having a great uh, starting to the budget. Uh, in terms of our C-51 project that we submitted, $65 million is currently in the Senate's budget. On restore reentry, our reentry program, we've got 250,000 in the House and a amendment pending today in budget in the Senate to match that dollar up. The Lake Worth Lagoon, just under 200,000. Loxhatchee River Initiative, $708,500. Um, Everglades workforce training, that's something that we've worked on for quite some time, um, and that's important to um, our, our, our Glades community at 850000 in the House. And then the Chain of Lakes, uh, Blue Way Trails, I know that this has been a priority of uh, Commissioner Kerner's, uh, 200000 in the House and 250000 in the Senate. Uh, a number of projects funded for loggerhead marine life, um, as well as some other um, opportunities for bush wildlife in the north end of the county. Um, you see some of the municipal requests that are in there with Delray Beach, Lake Worth, and Palm Beach. Um, we move on, <clears throat> continuing with some of those highlights uh, to uh, some of our Green Acres uh, uh, projects with our fire station renovations, um, some of the Jewish Family Services and Ruth Rails on the south end of the county uh, receiving 200000 in funding to date, Alzheimer's Community Care, our Palm Beach County Rape Crisis Center matches up in the House and Senate at 282,000 in recurring dollars. Uh, the Cox Science Center at 500,000 in the Senate. And then uh, some uh, Boca Raton project at 550,000 that I know the mayor's excited about that being in the budget. In terms of some of our beach funding, obviously we have worked throughout the years on accelerating beach funding and getting it up to that 50 million and beyond mark. We're at 58.65 million statewide in the Senate. 50 million statewide in the House, plus some additional dollars for some of their state park beaches. And you can see some of the projects that are listed below locally that are covered uh, within those allocations uh, thus far. Um, I believe that Rachel Von Lahren is still here from Palm Beach State College and thank her and Dr. Parker for their work on their dental facility, which is now standing at 8.6 million in the House. Uh, we're working with them to try to get that number up to $25 million so, so that it can begin construction on that particular facility, and we're hopeful that they may be able to do that. Max Planck with $1.389 million, and then we just discussed the University of Florida and working with Vice President Kaplan and his team, and we thank him for uh, bringing our team in with his to help assist in that appropriation. We've got $100 million in the Senate. We've got a few weeks to work with the House to reconcile that as we move into our budget negotiations. 
Uh, and then finally, just a couple of the items that are still out there. We don't have funding in the House or Senate yet, but I wanted to just let you know that we are still working on a number of these items, including Peanut Island restoration, our HRC2. Actually, we have an amendment in the Senate today for $400,000 for that project, the Corbett Levy, uh, Green K, and then some of our additional infrastructure funding for uh, fire rescue, briny breezes, and some of the central Palm Beach County area. So the budget's not done yet. It's still very fluid and uh, we're working on um, getting there. And then I'll just end it on the affordable housing funding piece for our appropriations. Uh, right now we're at 268.1 million in SHIP funding in the House, 209 uh, in the Senate, plus an additional 128 million for some affordable housing programs in there. Um, we're hoping to continue to bump that dollar up a little bit more. I know the Housing Coalition has sent out some alerts to continue working even on that $268.1 million uh, uh, amount. Mr. Chase. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, this is week five. Tomorrow is the actual midday of the legislative session. So after Wednesday, that is when bills start to filter away. Um, as we talked during Palm Beach County days, there were 3,500 or so bills filed. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, during that first week about what our priorities are, what bills we are watching. So today is just a kind of a follow up on some of the higher profile bills that are either moving or not moving through the through the session. Uh, we'll start with elections. Uh, Senate Bill 524, that would do a, a number of things, including require election supervisors, supervisors to conduct reviews of voter registration rolls at least once a year. I uh, would add requirements to the vote by mail process, including voters to write in the last four digits of their driver's license numbers, state ID card, or social security numbers. It also creates the Office of Election Crimes and Securities. In the original bill, it did have did give uh, counties the option to open two wild card early voting sites in an area that they wouldn't necessarily be. However, um, as this bill has moved through the amendatory process, that particular section has been amended out. Um, so that is something that we will follow along. Um, following the Surfside tragedy. Um, there is some action on building codes uh, and condo association rules. So a couple of bills that were heard last year, most of this conduct is being heard in the Senate. Um, uh, SPB 7042 and Senate Bill 1780 are kind of traveling together. 7042 is the committee bill. That's the bill that I would expect to proceed through the process. Um, basically, they ex uh, establish mandatory structural inspection programs for buildings that are either greater than three stories in one bill, the other bill has three stories or greater. So that's the main difference between the two of them right now. Uh, inspections would be required once a building is 30 years old and every 10 years after that. Uh, buildings that are within three miles of coastline are assumed to be more vulnerable to the corrosive effects of sea salt and would be required to be inspected after 20 years and then seven years after that. Um, uh, these bills both moved through regulated industries last week, um, and we would look forward to following them uh, in the Senate. Both bills highlight the fact that either a Florida licensed architect or Florida licensed engineer could do the structural analysis, and then they would have to report back to the condo association so they can prepare financially. Some bills that we are supportive of uh, and uh, hopefully are moving through the process. Number one is the Pahokee Road designation. This would honor Palm Beach County Sheriffs Manuel and Wallace by renaming State Road, a portion of State Road 715 at Pahokee after them. Uh, this bill is moving through this year. Uh, it is uh, in its second of three committees in the House, and it's in its final committee, uh, uh, final committee in the House, and second of third in the Senate. So we do expect that to move along. Uh, regulation of smoking in public places is an actual, uh, is might be the only reverse preemption bill this year that would give counties the opportunity to further restrict smoking within the boundaries of public beaches and public parks. Uh, that was passed in the Senate Environmental and Natural Resources Committee yesterday and moves to its final committee in rules. Um, and in the House, that bill is in its final committee. Who the, says they don't believe in home rule? <laughs> Uh, there were several members who took full credit for that yesterday, as a matter of fact. It was very good. 
Um, we are following the juvenile justice uh, program expunction programs. There's the bill to actually allow for the expunction uh, and a public records request for that. Um, uh, Commissioner Weiss, we talked about that very early in the session. We've been following that. Um, both of those are moving through the process. They're in their final committees. Uh, we are supportive of both of those bills. Uh, the Visit Florida Tourism Marketing Bill is proceeding. Uh, the House and Senate bills vary a little bit. That kind of extends Visit Florida to its end sunshine uh, uh, sunset date. The Senate would end that in 2031. The House would end that in 2028. So there's still a little bit of a difference there. The Senate has already passed its bill. The House bill is on uh, second reading on the House floor. So they will have to work that out between the two of them. Uh, another bill we support is the uh, FWCC bill. That's our main derelict vessel vessel this year um, uh, after some initial concerns with uh, parks and recreation about swimming areas i think we moved past that and that's a bill that we do support it's currently on the senate special order calendar on the floor and uh, moving through the house it's in its second of three committees um, Representative Wilhite's hurricane loss mitigation program, that delays the future repeal of the hurricane loss <coughs> mitigation program. Um, our public safety department, that is one of their priorities. We're uh, supporting that. That is in the Senate appropriation, its final committee, uh, as well as the House Infrastructure and Tourism Appropriations Subcommittee, uh, which is, uh, that means it has one more committee to go. Resilience related advisory committees. This is a bill that would help the South Florida Climate Compact meet. Uh, as we know, it's a very large, encompasses a very large geographic area. So we wanted to try to help them use tele, uh, telephonic communications to meet. Um, that has, however, kind of hit a little bit of a speed bump. I think it's, it's being seen as more of a COVID related bill than it is maybe a large area bill so that's something we're going to have to work on however it has not been heard uh, in the house yet it needs to be heard either this week or next week uh, for that to for that to move along it does it is moving along in the senate but our issue is in the house right now substance abuse providers that tightens the rules on some of our substance abuse providers that's a the bill that is sponsored by senator gail harrow and representative mike caruso it has already passed the senate and it's in its final um, house committee so we're looking forward to, to seeing that move along Senate Bill 800 is economic development. Uh, that particularly helps our Glades area with a rural jobs tax credit that they would be eligible for. Um, uh, that is in the Senate Finance and Tax on Thursday, and then we'll move to its final committee. It is past the House Infrastructure and Tourism, and it will be in its final uh, subcommittee on, it was, it, was, it was heard yesterday. The long-term recycling goal study, that's a um, uh, priority of our SWA as well as FAC that requires the Department of Environmental Protection to develop a, a waste reduction and recycling plan by a new date, uh, sort of a new extended date. Uh, that's what we were looking for. So um, it's, it's in its first House committee. So we're trying to help that move along, but it is moving along in the Senate. Some, some of the preemptions, um, Senate Bill 242, emergency orders prohibiting, uh, excuse me, um, prohibiting, uh, prohibiting mandatory training on racial and sexual discrimination. That bill has not yet been heard in either the Senate or the House. I would expect that not to be heard uh, further. Senate Bill 254 on emergency orders prohibiting religious services. That has already passed the Senate and that is on the House floor awaiting a vote. Senate Bill 280 on local ordinances. This is the bill that would require local governments to produce a business impact estimate for uh, prior to passing any ordinance. Um, the estimate must be published on the local government's website and include certain information such as the purpose, economic impact on businesses and compliance costs. Um, uh, there was, uh, there have been many changes to this since it was first uh, introduced. Uh, we were initially very opposed to that with the changes that have been made. Uh, we have become supportive. It, it does ask local governments to do a lot of the things that, that you already do now is we reach out to our business community friends before an item is brought to you about their, uh, about their input. Um, but it does have some attorney's fees. Um, 
and um, we, it, it's not something that the local government would have to now do itself. They can outsource that business estimate to either another entity or a local uh, business community organization. So that bill has already passed the Senate. That is one of the Senate president's priorities. Uh, it flew there, there very quickly. It's in the House Civil Justice and Property Rights Subcommittee. It's still awaiting that hearing, and that is, that's the second of three stops in the House. So we will follow that bill along. Vacation Rentals 512, that uh, bill is being picked up exactly kind of where we left it off last year. It would preempt the regulation of advertising platforms to the state, but would allow local governments um, to run registration programs. It does still cap the fee for an individual at $50 or a collective vacation rental registration at $100. Uh, that is something that we're working on fact to bring up. Um, that is a bill that we're monitoring. It's in its last, house, uh, last Senate uh, committee and in its second committee in the House. Tree trimming was a, uh, was a concern going into the session. There was language that uh, was amended that removed previous ambi um, am ambiguous language about trees being a danger and trees uh, posing an unacceptable risk. With the removal of that language, our um, uh, environmental and resource management team felt that gave us some comfortability. So we are moved off a pose on that and we are monitoring that uh, both uh, the House and Senate, that's in the second of third committees. Home kitchens uh, is a term most of us had to Google this year. So uh, these are food products that are made in home kitchens, made of products that, uh, of food products that don't easily spoil or are considered shelf stable. They could be breads, rolls or biscuits, honeys, jams or jellies, fruit pies or cereals. So. Uh, this would give uh, home kitchen operations um, uh, the, the allowance to operate in a private residence. Um, it would exempt them from food permitting requirements. Um, they would not be able to handle certain items, which would be raw milk, raw milk products, raw oysters, or raw shellfish. And it does limit home food operations to a maximum sales gross of $250,000 a year. Um, Basically, it, it limits sales to 10 meals per day per home. Uh, this is a, a bill that came from the West Coast. Um, it is in the Senate Regulated Industries this afternoon at 2 o'clock. It's its first of three committees in the Senate, and it's in its second of three committees in the House. Time to get out the iron skillet. <clears throat> Uh, some other preemptions we are following. Senate Bill 696 uh, on transportation network companies. This was a bill that would have um, uh, forced Palmington International Airport and other airports to lower the fees that we charge Uber, Lyft, and other TNCs um, who, who uh, uh, who deliver to the airport. Um, we currently charge a very low fee of $2.50. This bill would have dropped that fee for everyone statewide to $2. Um, you know, as you know, the airport is, uh, is self-sustaining, so there's a very delicate balance of budget, of, of income and cost there. So if one, uh, if one revenue source was, was uh, flattened, another would have to go up. Um, we, we talked to, uh, the uh, Senate Transportation Chair, uh, which was the first committee of reference, she was very supportive of that. She was also very supportive of the fact that um, this is a this is now becoming a law enforcement issue. Palmach International Airport spends three million dollars a year on traffic enforcement, um, and the large part of that need is not our taxi cabs because they're sort of segregated, but it's the it's the taking care of uh, Ubers and and uh, Lyfts and other cars that are that are in with with other pedestrians and other cars. Um, that bill was up for its first committee. It was temporarily postponed in its first House committee. That is good news for that. Uh, it may not come up again. It has not been heard in the Senate, and I do not expect it to be heard in the Senate. Senate Bill 1824, Alternative Mobility Funding Systems. This is a bill that was pushed by some municipalities that would kind of um, statutorily prefer mobility funding systems over and above some countywide impact fees. This is obviously an issue with us. Um, we have uh, uh, met with uh, with 
with committee staff on that to explain to them our position. We've also joined forces with St. Lucie and other counties who have similar issues as us. Um, that uh, we met with the House staff last Monday. That bill was not on the committee last week. I believe its last committee meeting was today. Uh, it was not on that agenda. So I would expect that to go um, to the wayside. Uh, having lunch with our uh, county administrator uh, two weeks ago, I was informed that I should make sure that bill goes away or not come back. So if you would please <laughs> report to her favorably on that, I would definitely appreciate that. Senate Bill 1194. Uh, local tax referenda requirements. This would mean that um, local referenda elections on tourist development taxes, tourist impact taxes, children's services taxes, independent special district property taxes, any referenda elections related to increase in county and municipal ad valorem tax millages or referendums elections related to local option fuel taxes would have to be held on the day of a general election, not uh, on another year. So that is a bill that we're watching closely. Uh, FAC has, uh, has definite concerns about the timing of millage rate notices and millage rate issues, um, and also uh, the effect of what if a one cent tax came in an odd number year, how would that work out? So that is a bill that we're working with FAC uh, to keep a very close eye on. Senate Bill 1124 is the preemption on local government wage mandates. Uh, obviously this would affect uh, our county. Uh, back in 2003, we enacted our living wage ordinance. Um, so that says that a living wage must be paid to all employees of contractors or subcontractors working on county contracts for construction related services. And then back in 2014, we added to make it applicable to contractors awarded contracts for the provision of paratransit transportation services and their contractors. So um, there was a delete all in the last committee stop that exempted collective bargaining agreements from this preemption, but this is a preemption that is moving forward in both the House and Senate. Um, it has two more committee stops in the Senate um, and one more committee stop in the House. Um, finally, on this page is Senate Bill 620. That's the Local Business Protection Act. This is, uh, as we've spoken about, this is sort of the mother of all preemptions, um, or as the sponsor would explain to you, the preemption bill to end future preemption bills. Um, this would create a mechanism for a private uh, for-profit business owner to recover business damages related to local government action, uh, not amounted to a taking in specified circumstances. Um, this bill came to the floor of the Senate fairly quickly, much like 280 did. This bill was amended substantially on the floor of the Senate uh, several weeks ago and passed out. Um, at the time, the sponsor of the bill with those changes did make the, uh, make the comment that with these changes, the Florida Association of Counties and the Florida League of Cities would support the bill. That is not the case. There's clearly, we have some underlying concerns about the, uh, the entire uh, circumstance of this bill. So even though it is done on the House floor, it is um, it has passed its first committee in the House and moves to the Judiciary Committee uh, at the House for its next stop. Some other bills that we are watching closely is the sovereign immunity bill. This is a bill that would cap the collectability of damages against the state and local governments. Uh, currently, that is uh, that level is two hundred thousand dollars a person and three hundred thousand dollars per accident. Uh, it would increase those amounts to one million dollars uh, adjusted annual annually to the CPI. Uh, the House bill has not changed. It has kept those figures the same. As the Senate bill has moved through the committee process, at its last stop, it had dropped those amounts from a million dollars to only raising them to $300,000 and $400,000. Um, that got it through that committee. Come to the next committee stop. It has been amended again to bring those back up to the one million. So we are uh, certainly opposing that going forward. Senate Bill 1078 is the elimination of soil and water conservation districts. This bill has changed substantially uh, since its uh, initial dropping. So it, it was going to eliminate that, uh, having the uh, Department of Agriculture kind of pick and choose which ones would survive. That has changed substantially. So now that bill basically says to be an to be elected to a soil or water conservation district, you must be in the district, employed or retired within 15 years from an agricultural business. So if a week before the deadline of filing for that district, if no one 
filed falls within that classification of an agricultural employee or retired from, then anyone can file for that. Um, that is in the Senate Ethics and Election Committee today at 1230, and it has not been heard in either of its two committee house references. Local government COPCN, uh, this is a bill that would exempt uh, that would exempt certain governmental entities from the requirement to obtain a COPCN to provide uh, advanced life support, non-transport services. So it would basically prohibit a county from limiting or preventing such entities from providing life support, uh, non-transport services. Uh, when this bill came out, in there very specifically, it did exempt counties with more than 35 municipalities. Uh, doing some quick math, that would be Palm Beach County. So even though we are, we are exempted from that bill, um, that is a bill that we are watching because that is still a bad precedent uh, that we see statewide. Um, and finally, 1542 Tourist Development Tax. This is the bill that was heard in committee this morning. This would allow certain fiscally constrained Gulf and Atlantic coastal counties to use up to a specialized percentage of the TDC revenue to reimburse public safety. Um, we see this uh, as, a, as a problematic nose under the tent issue. Uh, we have always opposed any expansion of the TDC for use away from their intended use of marketing, promotion, or tourism related infrastructure. Um, after some questioning from members of the Palm Beach County delegation, among others on this committee. Uh, this bill was temporarily postponed this morning uh, and the sponsor agreed to work on, a, on an amendment that would give some of these smaller counties the same conditions as coastal counties have to change uh, how those dollars are being spent. But, but it seems like that would require TDC approval um, uh, and a, a definite nexus to tourism. So we will see um, how that amendment pops up. Some other quick bills we were watching, uh, transportation projects 398. This is a bill that would max out uh, at 25% the, the amount of all revenues deposited into the state transportation trust fund uh, that might be used for public transportation projects. Um, I, I, we just don't want to see that amount capped. Um, we learned last week that the state department of transportation has kind of changed their issue on this and are starting to oppose this issue. So we will help them follow this, uh, this issue closely. It's in its last stop in the Senate um, and its last committee stop in the House as well. State Bill 716 is the public records uh, protection for people who adopt animals. It is not going anywhere. It's not been here in either the House or the Senate. The public records exemption for homelessness counts is moving along quite nicely. It's already on the Senate floor on second reading and in its, it's in its second of three committees in the House. The uh, film and television rebate program. Um, it is moving slowly in the Senate. It has not been heard in the House uh, this year, um, so I, I do not hold out hope for that. 7 to 1186 is the agritourism bill. So this is a bill that would prohibit denial or revocation of a property's agricultural classification um, and would allow them to participate in, uh, in, in agritourism um, uh, benefits. So I, I did sit down with the sponsor of this bill last week, um, talking to her about some of the concerns that we had about this bill. Number one, you know, uh, we're concerned about facilities that may start out to be agritourism only, um, or facilities that might turn to a to a larger percent of agritourism with that with and losing kind of their agricultural percentage. There's no really set percentage in there. We talked about that. That's not something they were interested in doing. We also talked about the potential offside impacts that might happen that we would be responsible for um, as a county that could be road impacts, that could be noise or hours of operations issue. It does give county local governments uh, the ability to regulate that. We were looking for a little more specificity on how we could go about that. So uh, I do have, uh, we did come to an agreement that we would watch the reactions of, or the effects of some of these agritourism businesses in the county uh, going forward over the next year. She would certainly be amenable to sitting down with us uh, next year to help us address any of these issues. Um, 
comprehensive uh, review of the Central and South Florida project. This would require the South Florida Water Man Management District to prepare an annual report of the of the uh, projects of of uh, uh, and how they are progressing. They would have to provide these to DEP and the governor. We support this. It's already on the House floor on second reading, um, and in its second of three committees in the in the Senate. Uh, the public records. Uh, protection for county attorneys it is in the last committee in the in the senate um, and it's in its first of three committees in its house the senate bill 1420 uh, excuse me 1940 is the statewide flooding and sea level rise re resilience so this is kind of the follow-up to last year's uh, resilience rules this would establish the office of statewide resilience in the office of the governor it would authorize use of the resilient florida grant program to fund pre-construction activities for some of the statewide flooding and sea level resilience plans um, so it is uh, currently in its second of three senate committees and its first of two house committees um, finally senate bill 1962 is the residential development projects for affordable housing this would authorize a county or municipality regardless of zoning ordinances or the locality's comprehensive plan to approve the development of any residential project including a mixed use residential development project on any parcel zoned for commercial or industrial use if at least 10 percent of the units are affordable this bill has been moving quickly through the senate uh, it passed the rules committee last week it is on the senate floor now um, and in the house it passed the state affairs committee last tuesday and it is on second reading on the house uh, on that side uh, so those bills are moving quickly through just uh, a couple of other items uh, we do continue to follow closely uh, efforts on reapportionment the senate the florida senate has passed out the maps on the florida uh, legislative districts the florida house has passed out the maps on the house legislative districts uh, they affect palm beach county minimally both uh, they kind of shift districts a little down south in both the house and senate map but we do retain uh, the same numbers of house members and senate members the senate did pass their congressional map um, the house uh, postponed consideration of their congressional map they are uh, scheduled to meet friday morning uh, to go over that congressional map uh, they are currently it, it seems waiting on uh, the response from the florida supreme court on the governor's uh, request uh, on his map uh, to sort of go forward on that so our our house legislative seats seem set our senate legislative seats seem set uh, and we are looking forward to seeing how the congressional seats uh, work out uh, and finally just a, a word of thanks to uh, my partner victoria nolan uh, the executive director and legislative delegation who's my partner in crime in tallahassee we appreciate all of her help um, as well as our delegation aide daniela bocanegra um, who uh, keeps the fires burning here uh, uh, with with you all uh, in palm beach county and mayor, vice mayor, and commissioners, that's just a small snapshot of what we're working on in Tallahassee for you this session. Available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chase, Mr. Bonlaren. Um, just my own comment on SB 280. Can you clarify why we have switched our position on that? Is that acquiescence to the realities of the world up there, or? Is it? Yes, I would put it largely that the the, sent the sponsor uh, Senate sponsor was very amenable to to largely all of the changes uh, requested by FAC and the League of Cities, uh, and uh, it got to the point where yes, we were at that point. Is this is this is as good as I'm going to get? Okay. Anybody else have any comments? All right. I think you be done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. And uh, we appreciate all of you who have spent time in Tallahassee, made calls for us, and are continuing to be up there. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully, we'll bring it home for you. All right. Mayor, I'll take a motion to receive and file. I was going to make a motion to receive and file. Very good. Vice Mayor, uh, do I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Kerner. All in favor, all opposed. Show that approved six to zero. Commissioner McKinley has left the meeting. Thank you. All right, so we have 6D1 done. Now we move on to 6, 6D2 administration. We'll have our water manager, Mr. A 
I'm assuming we want a presentation on this, and so. All right, good morning, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Jeremy McBrien, County's Water Resource Manager. Um, sorry, Patrick, did you want to introduce? Okay, sorry. Um, I have at the table uh, Assistant County Administrator Patrick Rudder and Michael Jones, uh, Chief Assistant County Attorney. Mr. Rudder is a man of few words. <laughs> I just stepped right in, sorry about that. Um, so I've got a short presentation today just to give you a little bit of background and talk about uh, this item. Um, I've been working on for a, a bit of time, kind of in fits and starts, where, where I, I've had the time and ability. And uh, really, first of all, just a shout out to um, uh, the other attorneys that I've been working with, uh, Scott Stone and Shannon Fox. They've been helping me throughout this process to, uh, to navigate all of the legal jargon and other uh, issues along the way. So um, we have a ordinance uh, right now uh, from 1993. It's a countywide ordinance. It does restrict um, landscape irrigation. And it also provides sort of a framework to make sure that there's consistency throughout the county. Um, what we're bringing to you today is, is a new ordinance that repeals and replaces that 1993 ordinance. And uh, with the objective of increasing water conservation, as well as uh, providing some regulatory consistency with the South Florida Water Management District rule uh, that they call the Mandatory Year-Round Landscape Conservation Measures Rule. So uh, just to kind of fast forward a little bit, um, actually um, the district started to do some additional outreach on their rule starting in um, early 2020. And so the county went ahead and, and began the process of, of um, determining kind of a path forward from that point. Um, kind of got our staff together and, and administrative uh, folks uh, briefed up and so we started that work. Um, and then uh, moving forward to January 2021, the Water Resources Task Force went ahead and adopted a resolution encouraging uh, the county as well as other local governments to, to move forward with, with some of these uh, landscape ordinance or landscape irrigation ordinance updates. Um, and then just a real quick note, so the, um, the existing ordinance that the county has applies countywide. Uh, so it applies in unincorporated areas of the county, but also uh, municipal jurisdictions that do not currently have an ordinance um, in place. Uh, our approach this time was to um, adopt or to write an ordinance that applied to unincorporated areas only, and that was based on some uh, discussions with the League of Cities, and that was their clear um, uh, desire to move forward in that manner. And then kind of as a, as a note um, on that topic, there have been about, there, there are currently about 14 cities that have uh, ir their own irrigation ordinances in their jurisdictions. And so those all here are listed on this slide. Um, and so these all comport with the districts, the water management districts rule uh, that, that they have in place. So just real quick about uh, a little bit about the rule itself. Um, it applies to all water users. There are some exceptions. Those exceptions include reclaimed water. So that's important for Palm Beach County. There are, there are exemptions or exceptions, I'm sorry, for agriculture. So that includes you know, a variety of things such as pasture and nursery and vegetables and citrus and, and sugar. So, uh, and then a third major exception is uh, athletic play areas. So golf courses and soccer fields and, and other um, uh, equestrian arenas and things like that. So the rule, uh, or I'm sorry, the ordinance uh, restricts irrigation to three days per week. Those are based on the uh, location. Um, the Proposed irrigation uh, prohibits irrigation between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So the, those are two, again, to maximize water conservation. And then in general, it prohibits the wasteful and necessary water use. And this figure on the page just provides a quick kind of snapshot image of if, if your address ends in a certain number and you have a certain number of days that you're uh, specified to, to enable to uh, irrigate your property. There are some uh, other general exceptions to the ones I just mentioned. Uh, obviously, if you're planting new vegetation, there's some allowances for that to do some increased irrigation until they're established. And then there's some exceptions for cleaning and maintenance and other repair activities, and all, as well as some of the um, herbicide and pesticide applications that sometimes get um, 
uh, injected or, or augmented with some of the automated uh, irrigation systems. And then there's a general exceptions across the board for, uh, you know, low volume uses and manual uses such as, um, you know, just watering with a hose or, or a pitcher or using cisterns or other rain barrel devices that you may have on your property. The district, Water Management District's rule allows local governments to implement a variance program and so, uh, and that specifies that we, we could review a petition for variance and adjust the number of days if there's a hardship. Um, some of the examples that, I've, that, I've, that I hear about are, for example, if a church or a synagogue has a service and their particular address uh, requires them to water on a day that there's a bunch of people walking around, you know, coming to their property, you know, they could, they could apply for a change and so we, we can make that adjustment at the local level. And then our proposed ordinance also has some enforcement criteria. And so we've got um, uh, code enforcement officers being, being the, the front of that process, as well as any others authorized by the county administrator. We have two options for, um, for financial fines, and those would not be either from a special master or uh, civil citations by enforcement personnel. And those are listed here. These dollar amounts are pretty consistent, very close to what some other local governments have done. Uh, throughout the area, um, so I think we're in line with the general approach there. And so, staff recommends a motion to approve on preliminary reading and advertise for public hearing. Their plan is to bring back a public hearing on February 24th at the BCC zoning meeting. So I will leave it there for any questions. Thank you, Jeremy. Vice Mayor Weiss. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to go ahead and. Uh, Move uh, preliminary reading and advertise for public hearing on January 24th, 2022 at 9.30. February. February 24th. Oh, February 24th, 2022 at 9.30. I have a second by Commissioner Marino. All in favor, all opposed. Show that as approved six to zero. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. We appreciate Good that. Day. Okay, we'll move on from watering our flowers to Naming a street. Commissioner Sachs, I know you've been eagerly Mayor, that, awaiting this item. Mayor, that item's been deleted from this agenda for it was it was future. deleted. Yes, sir. All right. So I have it as an add-on. Add-on deleted on that one. All right. Never mind. All right, so that takes us to F, which we've done, takes us to G. County Attorney. Morning, commissioners. Uh, staff recommends the motion for granting a request by the county attorney to schedule a private meeting at an attorney client session between the Board of County Commissioners, the county administrator, chief assistant county attorney, and outside counsel pursuant to Florida statute section 286 011, subsection 8, Florida statute, to discuss settlement negotiations in the pending litigation which Palm Beach County is presently a party. In re National Prescription Opiate Litigation, case number MDL 2804, Northern District, Ohio, and Palm Beach County versus Purdue Pharma et al., case number 1118-OP-46121-DAP -DAP in the Northern District in Ohio. And two, to give public notice of a private meeting for an attorney-client session, which will be held at 12 p.m. on March 8, 2022, in the Makita Conference Room at 301 North Olive Avenue, 12th floor, West Palm Beach, Florida. And placing further notice of the private meeting on the agenda of the Board of County Commissioners for its meeting. The following persons will attend the meeting with the members of the Board of the County Commissioner who are present at the time, Verdinia Baker, County Administrator, Denise Kaufman, County Attorney, David Adi, Chief Assistant County Attorney, and Shana Sachs, Outside Counsel. Okay, um, just to help our listeners who are not attorneys, basically this is approval of a shade meeting, which would be the opportunity for the commission to hear from our attorneys with respect to this litigation. There would be a record taken, the court reporter will be present, and when this matter is finally resolved, those records will be released for the public to view if they so desire. Ms. Kaufman. 
Uh, just a minor correction to the first part of the motion. Uh, number one should include the county attorney as well as the county administrator, chief assistant county attorney, and outside counsel. Okay. Um, I have a motion by Vice Mayor Weiss, seconded by Commissioner Kerner. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, all opposed, show that is approved six to zero. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. I think we have now completed our regular agenda. It's time to move on to staff comments. Administration. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, would you like to take up board appointments first before staff comments? Would you like to do board appointments or you want to do staff comments? Oh, I'm sorry. I've pulled my agenda completely apart here, so I'm completely out of order. Okay, let's do uh, appointments. Uh, we'll go from left to right. Commissioner Bernard? None, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Kerner? No appointments. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Marino? None at this time. Vice Mayor? None, sir. Commissioner Sachs? None at this time. Thank you, and I have none. Thank you. All right, then I guess it's time for staff comments. Okay. Uh, Mayor, I would like to just uh, one note. Uh, as we enter into February, uh, this is Black History Month, and I know that last meeting, uh, Commissioner uh, Bernard had talked about some of the wonderful program we have at our library system, would encourage you to look into those and join us. And I'd also would say that at the conclusion of today's meeting, we would invite the Board of County Commissioners, staff, and others downstairs. We'll be rolling out our bus, our Black History Month, Month bus. So thank you to Clinton Forbes and his team for bringing that to us, and we're going to do some photographs at the end of today's meeting downstairs. Rolling out being the, uh, rolling the, out. the proper verb, I guess. Rolling out. Very good, Mr. Forbes. We'll be happy to meet you downstairs to do our photo op. County Attorney, I understand you might have a few words to say. I do. With the board's uh, permission, I would like to ask Mr. Robert P. Banks to come and stand here at one of the podium so that we can talk about him. So we can throw things And county out. attorney staff, if you would like to come down and stand around him, that would be great. <laughs> this is a celebration and a bit of a funeral. <laughs> it's a celebration for him, but a sad day for us. As you can see, members of the county attorney's office are here to share this moment with Mr. Banks. March 1st, 2022 will be his last day with the county attorney's office. Robert P. Banks, affectionately known as Bob, is a 33-year veteran of the county attorney's office. Bob was hired on February 13, 1989 for the position of county attorney to land use. He worked his way up to chief land use county attorney beginning on June 26, 2012, a position he continues to hold today. Bob is undoubtedly a genius. He has a thirst for knowledge and an impeccable memory. If there is a question presented that he cannot answer immediately, he always seems to delight in finding the answer and finding the best solution. There's a couple of things people may not know about Bob. Bob loves his coffee. <laughs> it's estimated that over the years and before starting his day of diligent work, Bob has made more than 6,150 trips to Starbucks for his morning coffee. <laughs> In addition, Bob is a lover of good food and lunch date with his peers. He's a very well-rounded person with a passion for many things. He loves bluegrass, live concerts, musical cruises, theater performances, beach walks and nature walks, and most especially bike rides. Although many people know Bob is a huge music fan, here's a little known fact about Bob's musical talents. Bob plays a mean dulcimer. <laughs> For those who think that I alone have composed these thoughts, let me assure, assure you that these are based on my thoughts along with comments from Bob's coworkers who care deeply about Bob and have appreciated working with him over the years. Comments like, Having worked with Bob for more than two decades, I can honestly say that he has been a pleasure and a gift, a true professional, always ensuring that the job was done. Bob is very thoughtful and always asks about my mom, 
which is very sweet and appreciated. He's just so lovable, and he will be missed. Bob is a warm and thoughtful person. Bob was as kind to me as an intern in 1989 as he is to me today. Bob has a wonderful laugh, and when we hear it, it lifts our spirit. Bob is undoubtedly one of the kindest people I have ever known, and the most correct. If Bob provides you with legal advice, take it, because he's right. Even though he's arguably the top land use expert in the state, if not the country, Bob is the most approachable and authentic lawyer I've ever known. Despite his constant heavy workload, he's always available to help out with any legal questions. He's an amazing mentor and will be missed tremendously. Bob has a voracious appetite for many things, food, music, culture, travel, books, information, knowledge, the outdoors, conversation, spending time with friends. He loves his life to the fullest. Bob will retire from his job, but he will never retire his mind. Finally, Bob is a gifted attorney and a kind, loyal friend. I am blessed to have worked with him and will miss his daily presence very much. I think what sums it all up is that all in all, Bob is a brilliant lawyer and a truly wonderful human being, and he will be truly missed. So despite our deep loss, we are very happy for Bob, and we congratulate him on his new chapter and wish him the very best. Mr. Banks, you are recognized. Okay. Okay. Well, usually I'm uh, pre prepared with short answers. I'll try to keep it short. But uh, it's, it's been a pleasure and a, really a kind of a dream for me to be working for this office for 33 years because I, I was a planner before I was a lawyer. I love land use law, I love appellate law, and I guess I've basically spent my entire career working on land use, local government law, and appellate law, the things I really enjoy. And I, although I get made fun of, I do get excited when new issues of Florida Law Weekly or Florida Law Weekly Supplement <laughs> come out to see what new zoning or land use cases or local government cases have come out, so. And uh, it's, this really, this office has been just a huge part of my life. And so uh, my wife and I, with our son, moved here. On, we moved to Jupiter on my, we moved to Jupiter on my son's first birthday. By the, before, while he was still one, I took the, uh, the job with the county. And uh, it's been a dream job since, uh, with both Denise Kaufman and Denise, Marie Neiman, I've had support of the county attorney. We won't talk about the earlier part of my career because until, uh, until Denise Neiman became county attorney, there were some uh, problems in our office. But uh, <laughs> for the, the longest time, we've had a steady, good office. They call it a county attorney family, and that's true because everyone treats each other as family members. And we've got a great support staff. Lynn Riley's been my secretary for I don't know, 20 or 25 years, and so uh, it's just been a great place to work. And uh, I'll, I'll miss working, but enough is enough. I've been either a planner, a lawyer, or in law school for over 40 years. So, uh, so it's it's time to just uh, relax a little bit. So, but I thank everybody for their support and. Uh, I'm not moving away, so I'll still be around the community. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you certainly have the admiration of your, your colleagues there, 
and we certainly appreciate all you've done to help us through our trials and tribulations up here. I'm struck by the oxymoron of kind and attorney. And I, and I think that that says a lot about you and about your service to this county. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor Weiss. Thank you, Mayor. I'll, I'll be brief uh, in honor of you, Mr. Banks, because you always are very brief in your remarks. And to, uh, to the county attorney staff, I have to say, when I saw all the attorneys coming into the room, I got very nervous. I didn't know what was up. But uh, Bob, I have to, I just want to tell you how much a pleasure it's been to, to be able to work with you. Some of our most contentious issues have to deal with land use, uh, and you have always been able to help guide me and the way I think and see uh, some of these issues, and for that I will be eternally grateful to you for your, your guidance and your leadership. So thank you, and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Commissioner Marino. Thank you. As one of the newest members of the board, I just want to say thank you for all of your experience. Uh, Kim Sicklin in my office, who's probably been here as long as most, uh, most of the long-termers, has always had held you in very high regard. And whenever there was an issue, she said, oh, just call Bob. <laughs> just reach out to Bob. So I just wanted you to know that you've been appreciated by a lot of people, and I wish you good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, Commissioner. County Administrator Baker. <laughs> uh, thank you, and Administrator Baker wanted me to make sure that we extended our sincerest appreciation for your <laughs> service to Palm Beach. Oh, is she on the phone? Okay, good. There she <laughs> is. Uh, you can't take over for her there, uh, Mr. Bob Laren. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Go ahead, Virginia. Bob? Bob, this is Virginia. Um, I want to say thank you for all the years uh, that you provided service to us. Uh, you guided us in the right way, uh, even when we didn't want to hear it. Uh, you were creative for us, but kept us within the lines. I wish you and your wife uh, much fun in retirement, uh, lots of good health, and uh, enjoy it. You've earned it. Thank you for everything you've done for Palm Beach County. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Baker. Uh, Mr. Von Laren, did you want to say anything on your own behalf? I'll put you but on the spot. Just that I, I know that all of us in administration have enjoyed all the time we've spent. Patrick Redder, I know, just values your legal opinion, your advice on all of the land use I have over the years in the legislative world. Um, you have a brilliant legal mind and a gentle soul, and we're going to miss you. Thank you. Commissioner Kerner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just wanted to say very briefly but very sincerely uh, both as uh, commissioner to lawyer and lawyer to lawyer it's been an honor to work with you and i appreciate your guidance and counsel and it's been a very impactful part of my time here so thank you very much for your service mr banks you're excused <laughs> thank you <laughs> Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Sachs, did you want to uh, interject? Well, no, I don't want to interject. I just want to thank Bob. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Bob, you have been a tremendous asset to, uh, to, to counsel all of us here in the commission on issues that are so important and so impactful. And we're going to miss you. I just wish we had a uh, of council position uh, in our legal council office, but uh, maybe we can we can bring you back in for uh, special special issues. And thank you, Bob, for all your years of service. And now go and enjoy. Thank you, Commissioner thank you. Sachs. Okay, I think we are ready to move on to commissioner comments. We will start with my commissioner to my right, Commissioner Marino. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I first would like to request an off-site proclamation recognizing the 110th anniversary of Pioneer Linens. Uh, 
I have a second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, show that is approved six to zero. And as uh, the county attorneys uh, leave the building, and, or I should say leave this chambers, I'd actually like to do a shout out to our staff. Um, they've always been wonderful in guiding me through all of our meetings and as I, as, as county commissioners, we are basically thought of to know a lot of, a lot about a lot of things. We know a little about a lot of things, but I think we are smart enough to know that if we're gonna go someplace, we need to take the experts with us, and that happens to be our staff. So I just wanna let them know that I greatly appreciate all the help and uh, guidance you've afforded me over the past year, and I look forward to it for many years to come. Um, a couple of notes about what's gonna happen this month. I would like to invite everyone to the Honda Classic. We kick off uh, February 28th, and I will be introducing the Women's Leadership Forum at the Honda Classic. So I've been an ambassador with the Honda since it moved to PGA National, and uh, the economic impact that that has on our county is immeasurable. So please join us at the Honda Classic. Secondly, Artie Gras is also February 19th through 20th up in uh, Palm Beach Garden.